It's exactly 11.41. Welcome back. This is the Mid-Morning Talk with me, Julie Ali. Now, he is a self-made millionaire, entrepreneur, keynote speaker, and author. Albert van Weyck chats about his book, How to Become a Millionaire at 22. Now, I'm way, way, way above 22. I wonder, is there still hope for me, Albert, to become a millionaire? Good morning. Welcome to the show. Hi, Julia. It's great to be here. It's awesome to join you guys uh, today on the show. And um, yeah, to answer your question, it's never, <laughs> never, never too late. <laughs> I, I get a lot of entrepreneurs. The, the goal of the book, How to Become a Millionaire 22, was with the purpose to empower the youth, to empower the youngsters with financial and entrepreneurial tools and concepts that we don't learn from school or from our parents. Uh, if you were born in a household like I was, where my parents weren't entrepreneurs, business owners, or you know, financially wealthy. Then I, I wanted to teach the youth these important concepts. But then a lot of older people read the book as well. And th they told me, you know what, Albert, I never learned this from my parents. I never learned this from school. And it actually helped me a lot. And I, I received so many testimonials from people well above their 60s. I have one lady who's 83 who started her business at 81 after reading wow. the book. So uh, it's never too late. So is the book all about business, how to become an entrepreneur? Is that what it's all about and thereby become a millionaire? I see that you're a qualified industrial engineer. So let's, you know, why did you, are you still pursuing that career or have you decided, did you kind of change track after writing your book and what led you to write the book? So, so, so the, questions there. <laughs> the, the book is mainly about my life story. Um, I, I started in primary school selling toys at school, uh, selling little wow. plastic strings, selling uh, clap guns and slime balls and all of these uh, Chinese toys at school. And then in high school, I started selling phones and laptops and uh, TVs and bicycles and whatever. And then I got into construction doing uh, like carports and paving and stuff like that. And eventually I started buying and selling cars. And then at age 19, I bought my first property and the, the book. Uh, and then I worked that property for four years until at 22, I could call myself a millionaire. And the book tells that story. And then from that story, shares all of these nuggets, all of these tools, all of these concepts that I applied in my journey to become a millionaire at the age of 22 that other people can now apply in their lives to do the same. So, so that's, that's why I wrote the book, to empower other people to live their dream. So to answer your question about industrial engineering, I finished my four-year degree. I worked one year as an industrial engineer in the industry, but then I quit my job. Um, because I, but at that stage, I had two properties that were bringing me income and I had side businesses that I then pursued full time. So today I'm 28 years old and um, I have my businesses and I have my property portfolio. And uh, I actually wrote my new book came out this year, How to Buy Your Happiness, which then tells the story from 22 up until where I am today and sharing new lessons and tools that I've discovered as I went along in my journey. Okay, we're going to go for an ad break, but um, think about this. My next question to you is, are you truly a millionaire? But after the <laughs> ad break. Awesome. <laughs> Soup, grocery hampers, and rendering financial assistance. Donate now. Standard Bank, Gift of the Needy, 272 327 654. Contact us on 031 271 3102. View our projects online on www.giftoftheneedy.com. Gift of the Needy, bringing ease to those in need. 
The US National Banking Loyalty Program puts cash back into your pocket. Earn cash back monthly on your purchases at participating butcheries when you pay with your Al Baraka debit card. Terms and conditions apply. Visit www.albaraka.co.za forward slash loyalty or contact our customer services on 0860 225 786 or WhatsApp us on 084 786 6563. Al Baraka, your partner bank. Al Baraka Bank Limited is an authorized financial services and credit provider. What makes Randery Jewelers the optimum place for your memorable gift? Is it our range of exclusive, high-end, luxurious jewellery? Or is it our master craftsmanship of all your bespoke jewellery needs? We believe it's because at Randery Jewelers, we know just how to make your special moments last forever. Whether it's for a wedding, anniversary, or just a simple gift to show your love, trust Randery Jewelers to make it special. www.randeryjewelers.com Make your moments last forever. With Randery Jewelers, the family name you can trust. You're listening to Mid Morning Talk with Julie Ali. Albert Van Wyk is uh, a 28 year old South African, and he is here talking about his book, How to Become a Millionaire at 22. And I asked him, Is he in fact? a millionaire. Albert, back to you. Yeah, so definitely at, at, age, at age 22, my net worth was just over a million. And now I'm 28. And all I can say is that my property portfolio has grown significantly and my businesses have expanded significantly. Um, but the, the purpose of the book is to empower other people to also do that, to also become millionaires. You know, I I had all the friends when I was 22 years old and I told them about what I'm doing and how I'm building my wealth. And they said, you know what, Albert, if I learned these things when I was in school, when I was your age, my life would have been completely different. And that's why I decided to do this, to write the book and to go out there. With, with the book, we've also done a lot of work. We visited over 178 schools over the last three years, over 18,000 um, students uh, that we've reached with this content about financial literacy and entrepreneurship. And I think we're making a big difference out there. Everyone wants to be a millionaire. Everybody wants to be rich because they believe that money can buy happiness. And I'm sure that you'd probably disagree with that in your next book. How to, what is it called? How to buy your happiness. So I'm actually saying that you should definitely buy your happiness. I'm I'm wondering money can buy happiness. We always think if I had this, if I had that, if I had a million dollars, I would be happy and I'd live happily ever after. Not sure about that, but you can unpack that as we go along in the program. What I'm picking up from you is um, investment in property. That seems to be uh, where you have made and continue making your money. Would I be correct? Yeah, so I I would say about 40 60% 60% of my income comes from property investor uh, investments. And then the other 40% comes from small businesses that I have. I have three different small businesses in different industries that I run alongside my property investment portfolio. And the, the great thing uh, about the property investment portfolio is that it is almost a passive income. So which allows you to spend more time, you know, as an entrepreneur developing your other businesses. So I have a mixed portfolio in terms of property and small business and entrepreneurship, uh, which I then use to generate my income and my wealth. Now, I know a lot, lots of people who've invested in second and subsequent properties, whether it was for their pension, you know, pension years or whatever it is, um, obviously got to quite a knock uh, with COVID-19. People, lots of people lost their jobs. They were unable to pay rentals, etc. Uh, when, how do you manage a situation like that? There was a time two or three years ago when talk was that um, put your money into industrial property. That's where the money is to be made. Again, COVID put paid to all of that. What do you? How do you respond to that? Well, I've I respond to it in a way that I've always done. People has always told me not to buy property. When I wanted to buy my first property, they said recession in South Africa, don't buy property right now. When I wanted to buy my second property, they said, no, the financial 
financial minister was just fired and the rand dropped with like two rand or something. And they said, don't buy property now. When I wanted to buy my third and my fourth property, they said, you know what? Land claims. Not a good idea to be into property right now. Not a good idea to invest in property. And when I wanted to buy my fifth and sixth property, they said, oh, COVID, you know, don't, don't spend your money into mm-hmm. property right now. Keep it, you know, protect your money. So to answer your question, there's always a lot of reasons not to do something. There's always a lot of you know, reasons and excuses that people can use not to do a great thing. But I think it's, it's, it, it's up to the entrepreneur to really go out there, have a leap of faith and do it the right way. If you have the right business processes in place, if your numbers ma- match up, you can still make money. It doesn't matter what's happening around you in the country. Um, I've been able through COVID with all of my businesses and my property portfolio, been able to pay all of my employees a full salary, no cuts. And um, in in actual fact, I bought more property during the COVID uh, period because people were selling their properties off. So uh, at better at better prices. So it all depends on the entrepreneur, I think. Um, there's people in South Africa with COVID, with the same country, the same pandemic, the same government, the same situation, the same economy that's making billions. And then there's people that's going bankrupt. But it's the same environment. And I think it's always up to the entrepreneur. Okay, I reckon you're one of the lucky ones or the smart ones. Um, when I talk property, a lot of people invest in second and third properties, they let it out. Um, And I do know lots of people uh, got their fingers burnt during COVID because their tenants were unable to come up with rentals. So they've lost a year or a couple of months of rental, which they're never, ever going to get back. How would you advise as an entrepreneur yourself, how does one manage a situation like that, COVID or not non-COVID? You still think that you're putting in... uh, honest, uh, reliable tenants in your property, whether it's uh, a business property or, um, you know, a, a, a rental property to live in. How do you ensure you do your credit checks and all of that? But how, what is the magic formula in making sure you get the right people in and they do pay rental timelessly? So they well, don't well, leave you out of pocket. First things first, uh, as a business owner, you need to protect yourself. So emergency funds are crucial. I have an emergency fund that, that kept me for six months during, during COVID. So even if, if I didn't receive any income for six months, I would still be able to maintain my properties, cover all of the costs, all of the um, overheads. So I think a lot of people that, that have properties that they rent out, don't have emergency funds in place. They, their own financials aren't in a sound, solid place and space. So that's the first thing. You need to make sure that you're not overexposed in terms of a bond on the house. You need to make sure that you have an uh, um, emergency fund in place. You need to make sure that your contracts is in such a, a way that it protects you and that it makes sure that you are safe. So there's a lot of business processes around property investment that you need to take into account. Then when we get to the tenants, I have a team uh, that that vets the tenants personally. So I don't don't just do credit checks. Uh, I have someone that looks them in the eye and and to make sure that you have good (laughs) tenants in the first place, because it's it's so okay. difficult to get a bad tenant out. It's much better to just get a good tenant in in the first place. And then finally, communication. When COVID hit, I had a sit down meeting with all of my tenants. And I said, okay, what's going to happen? What can you do? What can you not do? Let's work something out. Let's come to an agreement. So I think if you take that approach, you'll get a much better um, income from your property because the tenant will then pay at least something instead of just paying nothing if you're not communicating with that tenant. So I think it's your business processes of your own business and portfolio, making sure you have the right team to, to make sure you have quality tenants. And then finally, communication with your clients or tenants, just like any other business. What was the reason behind the books? I mean, it's very magnanimous of you to want to share all your secrets of, you know, how to become a millionaire. Um, I'm not sure there are many people like that out there. Or was the purpose just to get in more money, 
to become a multimillionaire <laughs> by the sale of your books. I'm, I'm, I'm not making any money from the books. The, um, <laughs> I'm, if, you, if you take the cut from the distributors and the stores, at the end of the day, the books have basically just cover the printing costs. So for me, it's a passion project. I have my property investments that generate my income. I have my businesses. That's where I make my money from. Um, the books for me is a give back. When I was a youngster in school, I came from a house that I didn't have wealthy parents. They weren't entrepreneurs. They weren't business owners. They weren't property investors. And I wished that there would be some kind of entrepreneur that could come to my school and teach me you know, how to do this, how to be an entrepreneur, how to think like an entrepreneur. What should I do to be a better entrepreneur? And I never had that. And when I found myself in a position where I accumulated a little bit of success, I, I thought, I want to make this difference in my community. And I want to go back and I want to be that entrepreneur that I wanted when I was in high school. So I, I, I wrote How to Become a Millionaire 22. I printed like 100 copies and I went to my local area. I come from the Muet in Pretoria and I spoke at the local schools in my area just to make a difference in my community. And then... The newspapers picked up on it. And before I knew it, I was on TV and radio. And then then this thing became a, a nationwide thing. And before I knew it, we were traveling to schools across the country. And like I said, we've reached over 178 schools over the last three years and more than 18,000 students. So it became a big thing. But the initial idea was just to make an impact in my community and just to help these kids out that that uh, is in the same position that I was. And I thought if I can share with them what I did and what I've learned, I can help them to also become millionaires. And the whole purpose of everything is to enable other people to fund their dreams, just like I'm able to fund my own dreams. And then after this whole journey, uh, after the last three years, I saw that the, the older uh, generation also needed this. And that's why I wrote the new book. How to Buy Your Happiness, which is more for an older audience, um, because there's just as big of a need <laughs> for the older audience than what there is for the youngsters. And, okay. uh, and we, yeah. we're going to talk about that after the ad break in two minutes, but let's still stick with your property issue. Um, you know, we know that uh, the property market has taken quite a knock with COVID. What other businesses are you involved in? And what do you believe now? I, I can't even say post COVID because we are <laughs> now being told by the health minister and what we see is playing out in India and South America um, is has got me very worried because we entering our winter season and uh, please God, let's not go down that route. But Undoubtedly, I think we're in for a third wave. How serious it's going to be, we don't know. Uh, people are really, really battling. Uh, but we'll get to that in a little while. What are your other businesses and how well are they doing? And if you need to be advising young people who've got a bit of ex extra cash and would like to invest, what would you say to them? Awesome. So my other businesses, I have one business called Gazaru. We are in the okay, media sorry. space. Can you please, can you just hold that? Let's take an ad break. We'll be back with you in a minute. No please. problem. It's exactly 12 o'clock. Cash back into your pocket. Earn cash back monthly on your purchases at participating butcheries. When you pay with your Al Baraka debit card, terms and conditions apply. Visit www.albaraka.co.za forward slash loyalty or contact our customer services on 0860 225 786 or WhatsApp us on 084 786 6563. Al Baraka, your partner bank. Al Baraka Bank Limited is an authorized financial services and credit provider. You're listening to Mid Morning Talk with Julie Ali. Albert, Albert van Weyck is my guest. He's an author of two books. He is a self made millionaire and he's here to tell us how to make our first millions. Can't wait to get my hands on the book because I want to become a millionaire <laughs> as well. <laughs> Having said that, do you want to respond to my question before the ad break? And also, Albert, 
because of COVID, lots and lots of large corporates had their people working from home for their own safety, for everyone's safety. Mm -hmm. They now have realized that working from home is cutting their costs the company costs, that they don't necessarily have to rent space. Um, and I'm wondering, because of that phenomena, is property prices not coming down and perhaps property is not the way to go? So your response. Uh, so, yeah, to answer your question before the ad break, I have a company in, in the media space called Gazaroo. We do website branding, social media management and SEO. So that's a completely different industry from property investment. And then I have a company uh, where we do construction supervision, where we place construction supervision resources on engineering sites. Um, okay. So that's, again, placing engineers on, on, on construction sites is a completely different industry as well. So, so there's a lot of entrepreneurs that say pick one thing and go all out for that one thing. And then there's other entrepreneurs that say, no, I have, have a few different things um, in different industries to make sure that, that all your eggs are not in the same basket. And in my journey and my career, I found that some months where the tenants were low in the, in the rental properties, my other businesses were doing well. And some months where my other businesses had a seasonal drop or something, the properties were doing well. So, so through the different industries, you can always make sure that you come out on top. Uh, in terms of the COVID situation with property, with I mean, we're seeing everything is dropping. So a property made a big drop. Um, the stock market made a big drop. Uh, businesses uh, lost a lot of clients and a lot of income. Uh, but again, I would say that that is not the case for everyone. It depends on what your business process looks like. It depends on how tough of an entrepreneur you are, how skilled you are in your, in your craft. And if you have enough skill as an entrepreneur and you've read all the books and you've ado adopted all of the techniques and the tools, you can survive that. Um, for, for example, in my case with, with property, I do residential property and I do multi -led. So when people had to leave their bachelor flat or when people had to, um, uh, you know, move out of their bachelor flat, uh, they moved in with me for a smaller room in a multi-let property. So in, in that case, if you position just, just yourself... Explain, explain that concept. It's the first time I hear about it. Multi so, for example, the, 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 in the houses I buy, I buy houses at, at, a, at a price where, where people have to sell. So when the economy drops... A property investor buys houses for cheaper, right? And then what they rent it out to the people that had to sell the houses in the first place. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, if you're a smart property investor, you can, with a down, you know, downward market, you can still generate income because you can buy the properties at a lower price and then rent it out to the same people that still need accommodation now because they've sold their homes. So that, that's just the way of thinking that you can think around it if you're in the property space. In the business space, you can always pivot. You can go online. I've seen so many businesses moving their whole business online. You know, using new ways to engage with your customer, using new ways to engage with your client. So I think it's all about the entrepreneur. It's all about the skill and the, you know, the guts and the, um, the sturdiness of the entrepreneur to be able to face tough situations like COVID. And COVID is just one example. There's multiple challenges every, every year. There's a new challenge. And as an entrepreneur or property investor, you need to be robust against that. Okay, so um, what I'm also hearing from you is be smart and diversify. Because that way, if something goes bang or goes pear-shaped, you have something else to fall back on. Uh, sound advice, I might add. Let's now look at the issue around how to buy happiness. When and how did the idea dawn upon you? Who's your target market? And can you truly buy happiness? I'm wondering about that concept. <laughs> yes, I'd be happy. I'd be yeah. very happy with lots and lots of money. But I'm not sure if I'd be satisfied and be i might be in a comfort zone but i'm not sure if i'd be truly satisfied with my lot in life 
so so there's a quote that says if you if you think money can't buy you happiness then you're just buying the wrong things and uh, <laughs> as i as i was traveling across the country speaking to so many entrepreneurs so many business owners so many people across south africa i've always found that there's one thing that all of them want they will tell me oh but i want to become a millionaire i want a million rand or i want to become a billionaire i'm like why do you want that no so that i can buy the house and the car and i'm like why do you want that oh no so that I can have respect in my community or that people would look up to me or something. And then I say, okay, why do you want that? So that I can be happy or that I can feel good about myself. Now, why do you want to feel good? So that I can be happy. So think about why you're doing what you're doing. The reason everyone is doing anything, if you drill it down to the root, it's to be happy. It's to have a more meaningful life. And, and I, I realized that and I was like, okay, so my generations before me said money can't buy happiness. And then I discovered the secret that kept my generations, me and my parents and my generations before me poor and unhappy. And the secret was that money can actually buy happiness. Because if, if we understand that and if we know how, then we'll focus more on making money and understanding money and finding out how money works and how to utilize that money to buy happiness for ourselves in our lives. Because I think too many people just say money can't buy happiness and then they don't focus on money at all. And then they'll never actually achieve that. Um, so the reason I wrote the book is the fact that there's so many people out there that walk the same path as I did. You know, your parents tell you get good grades in school, go study, get the degree and get the prestigious job and then you'll be happy. You know, and I did that. I got good grades at school. I went and studied industrial engineering. I got the engineering job and I found myself in a position where I was still not happy. And that is when I said, there's a lot of people just like that. And I want to write this book to enable them to have a more happy and meaningful life. Now, when I look at becoming a millionaire or, you know, super rich, um, am I going to be happy with all? all of the stuff that my money is going to buy. Uh, and I'm going to throw a spanner in the works here because I'm thinking, you know, environmentalists tell us that we just accumulate and accumulate and accumulate stuff. And after a while, it just becomes meaningless. And then we get rid of it and we're polluting the entire mm. globe. Yeah, so, so happiness, I, I did two years of research on what exactly makes a human being happy. And there's actually five things that makes you happy. And one of them is actually stuff, you know, stuff that you buy. A shopping spree makes anyone happy. Um, and, but that only lasts a while. It gives you a dopamine rush, which, which makes you feel happy. But that only lasts if you're in the shopping spree or a week or so after you bought those items that you're talking about. But the second thing is meaningful relationships. And it's almost the most important one in terms of the, the four in, ingredients. Uh, meaningful relationships give you oxytocin. So when you, when you spend time with the people that you love, you get that uh, chemical in your body and then you feel happy. And that is a big one. Um, the other one is peace of mind. Peace of mind uh, you can't releases, buy that. You can't releases buy that. serotonin. Now, now let's look at it. You, the first one was stuff that gives you dopamine. You can buy that. Okay, that's real easy. Mm. The second one is meaningful relationships. How do you buy that? Okay, you invest By in that. You invest with more time. time. Yes. yes. So many people can't spend time with their kids or their wife or their family because right. they're too busy in a nine-to-five job or they, you know. So by buying out time, buying. Um, trips, buying vacations, mm -hmm. you can do that. Peace of mind, you can buy that. The most chilled people that I've seen during the COVID pandemic was my wealthy friends that had investments all over the world, that had investments here and there and in property and in stocks and in businesses. They were as cool as a cucumber. While the other people <laughs> that didn't have wealth all over distributed were stressed out, they weren't happy, they were sad, they were afraid, they, they had fear. And, and so by using money correctly and becoming financially independent, you buy that peace of mind. And then well, the final same. one is health. <laughs> Very important. Health gives I you think happiness. That's top and, of the list. That should you can, be top of the list. You can buy it uh, by buying a gym membership or buying better food or buying time to go to the gym. But those four that I've mentioned 
are all just momentarily. If you're not healthy, you're not going to be happy. If you don't have peace of mind, you're not going to be happy. If you're not in a relationship that's meaningful, you're not going to be healthy, happy. And if you can't buy those things, you won't be happy. But the final one, the fifth one, gives you that what you were asking about, sustainable, meaningful happiness forever. And that is when you are doing what you are fashioned to do on planet Earth. When you, you are living your purpose, you know, when oh. you are living your passion, and the only way that you can do that is if you have the funds to fund that dream of yours. So that's going to make you live happily ever after. Is that what you're saying? Yes. If you can <laughs> do every day what you are fashioned to do on this planet Earth, if you can okay. find out, first of all, what is that passion? What is that purpose? What is it that you are fashioned to do? And if you, if you can do that every day by funding it, like, for example, I love what I do every day. It feels like I'm living in a dream. But I have my properties and businesses in place to allow me to travel the country and speak to the people and write these books and make a difference. But that gives me joy and meaningful life and, and, and happiness. But I can only do that if I'm able to fund that and if I'm financially independent. So that's how you buy that meaningful, happy life. Albert van Weyck, you are a multi-millionaire now. You are passionate about what you do. So I have no idea in my, I have no doubt in my mind that you're in a very, very good space. What more do you want to achieve in life? What more are you going to do? And is there a third book in the pipeline? <laughs> Yeah, so I'm thinking of a third book. Uh, I'll do this book in Afrikaans, actually. Uh, it's my home language. The previous two books were in English, but I'm thinking about the, actually doing an Afrikaans book. And um, for me, life is all about um, I don't have a family yet. I'm not married. I don't have kids. So for me at this stage, I'm continuing to build my wealth in order to, to put me in a position where I can have a family and, uh, you know, never, ever having to worry about any finances in, in that space and travel the world and see all the different countries. I started traveling recently in the last few years. It was the first time I ever went overseas. It was the first time anyone in my family ever went overseas. Ooh. And uh, I just think that, that that's something that I would do. But more than that, my goal is that every young person in South Africa should get the financial education that they need to become financially successful. And that is the goal that I'm chasing for the future. So to answer your question, that is my big goal. That's my, that's my moonshot. That's where I'm going to, to help other people, to equip them with the financial education so that they can become financially independent and make their dreams come true. Because imagine if you can unlock that. Just imagine like 30% of the population has no financial constraints. What would they do? We would have inventors, we would have Absolutely. artists, we would have sports Absolutely. stars, we would have music, we would have you know everything because everyone has a specific talent, that that purpose, that reason why they're here. And if we can enable them to do that by equipping them to become financially independent, then we're gonna see a complete new world. Okay. So, my final question to you then, uh, we have an unemployment, youth unemployment rate of over 30% in the country. Uh, do you believe that if everybody became entrepreneurs or read your book, that, that our unemployment rate can come down? Or what do you believe is going to fix our unemployment rate in the country? Well, you know, all of the entrepreneurs out there says that entrepreneurship is going to fix uh, unemployment because, I mean, if I'm, I'm in a position where a, f a few years ago, I never thought I would, you know, employ so many people or be responsible for so many families. But just the other day, my brother and I sat and we looked at all of the employees that we have and we realized that hey, we're taking care of so many people. We're taking care of so many families. And wow. the salaries that we pay are not just going to our employees. It's going to our employees' children. They are able to go to school. They are able to go study. They are able to put food on the table. And, and they then use that degrees to generate more income that can then, you know, pay more people. So, so the, the, the pay it forward model is absolutely amazing if you think about it. If you just employ one person, 
they can then make a difference to so many other people's lives. So imagine if you have a small business and you're employing 10 people or 50 people or 100 people. You know, that makes a big, big difference. So, so I really think that um, by empowering people to become financially independent through entrepreneurship or whatever business endeavor it might be, um, we are enabling them to empower other people. And, and I really think that's the solution. Albert van Veek, it was wonderful talking to you. Continue becoming, um, touching lives in a positive way. And hopefully we will make contact with you sometime in the future. Go well. And um, can't wait to get my hands on your book. Thank you for awesome. being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I had a great time. And to everyone out there, just keep going and make it happen. It's up to you. It's exactly 12.17.